I want to now introduce you to a very interesting idea, right? So computer science is full of beautiful problem that can be represented very easily, but then can expose you to some very interesting discussions. So for example, let me show you a nice problem. There are three variables, A, B, and C, right? And each of the variables can take, can take either false or true. Okay, so can anyone in chat tell me how many combinations are here for A, B, and C? How many possible combinations are there for A, B, and C? Okay, so, yeah, somebody said eight, somebody said 27. <laughs> so what is the right answer? So why is it eight? I, okay, Rabindra can have to answer on tech. I, okay, somebody got eight, right? So, yeah, so let me say why eight? Because A can be two values, B can be two values, and C can be two. So two times two times two is eight, right? Yeah, of course, for those who got it, right? So now we have to ask an interesting question. If I take A and B, and then I combine it. So I'm taking now pairs of, pairs of values, right? Combining it with one operation, then taking another pair of values, combining it with another operation, etc. This is a Boolean condition. Right. And this condition, if you evaluate it, will return either true or false because we are taking essentially trues and falses, joining them with operators that only can return true and false and evaluating it. Right. Now I'm going to tell you something very interesting. If I give you an arbitrary condition like this, right, with three variables, is it easy for you to tell me whether the answer is going to be true or false? Oh, so no, let me say, say differently. If I give you an arbitrary condition like this, is it easy to tell me if the answer is going to be true or false for a human being? You have to do it in your head, but is it easy for the computer to evaluate it? The answer is obviously yes. Right. In fact, you can just run, you can just run it. Right. But now I'm going to ask the question, suppose I didn't give you this particular allocation. Suppose all of them were set to true by default. And I ask you, can you find, can you find what choice of values I have to give to A, B, and C to make this condition be true, right? And I say, please find the value of A, B, and C that makes this condition evaluate to true, right? So that is a satisfiability problem, right? Can I take a Boolean condition like this and assign values A, B, and C? Maybe A is true, B is false, and C is true to make this condition be true or false, right? It turns out this problem is not easy to solve. And by easy to solve, I mean that it requires us to evaluate multiple, multiple conditions. So for example, if I have N variables, so if I have N variables, how many, how many, how many configurations will I have to check? The answer is it will require me to check two, two to the power of N configurations. And we have seen this two to the power of N before. So for example, if I have 50 variables or if I have hundred variables, that would be two to the power of hundred configurations that I have to check. I have to try all possible combinations of A, B and C and see if this condition evaluates to true or false. And so it will take, you know, again, we have done this type of calculation in the first section. You can try to go back and figure out how long will it take for a computer to check two to the power of hundred configurations. The answer is very, very long, much longer than the age of the age of the planet Earth or something like this, right? So it grows very, very, very rapidly. So this is a very simple but powerful example of how we can start with a simple construction. We can create an interesting problem. In this case, the problem is given a Boolean clause like this, which combines variables using ands and ors. Can I find an assignment of the values A, B, C, etc. Just two values, true or false to each of them that satisfies this condition. That means this condition must evaluate to true. And the answer is yes, for small clauses I can. But as soon as the clause has even a hundred variables, which doesn't seem that hard, it's almost impossible for our computers to evaluate. It, it takes far too long, at least naively it takes far too long. And there's a whole body of computer scientists who have tried to find algorithms to kind of speed this up and so on. So it starts very interesting algorithmic computer science discussions from a very simple 
what are we in session three of intro to Python, right? So, but in programs, you have to try to avoid those kind of situations. So you don't, you know, you don't run, paint yourself into a corner. At this moment, you cannot see if you really need to solve those kind of problems. But I just wanted to show you an interesting computer science problem.